This is Project Audacious. A 1967 Chevy Corvair. The engine is going to be an Audi 4.2 V8. And I'm going to be putting the engine in the back seat of the car. It's going to be a mid-engine build. And uh, as far as I know, it hasn't been done before, certainly not a Audi V8. Uh, there have been a lot of mid-engine Corvairs built. Originally, the Corvair had the engine in the back, so, I mean, Jay Leno called it the uh, poor man's 911 back in the day. It had a flat six air-cooled engine just like the 911, and it was in the back just like a 911. Of course, it was not a 911, not anything close to a 911. but. Uh, so, so the the engine was in the back. So the, the there's a lot of uh, there's no engine in the front, and the the floor plan and the floor pan in the car is all flat. There's no hump. There's no mid hump. So uh, it, it's sort of suited to a mid engine conversion. Like I said, there have been a lot of them built. Uh, there was a kit sold back in the day where you would take the transaxle and you'd turn it turn it around. And then you put an engine in mid-engine. Uh, and the problem with those, if you if you ever seen, is that the engine ends up sticking way forward, uh, and uh, you got to scoot the seat way up. And you know it works great if you don't have any feet. <laughs> so it's a it's a really tight fit and extremely loud and noisy. All the ones I've seen and heard. Uh, so an Audi V8 actually is really suited to this conversion because it's really short. I think the I think a, a small block Chevy's got 27 inches of length to it, and this shows that. So an, an Audi's engine needed to be really short, so they made it only 22 inches in length. So it, it should be tucked back in pretty good in the back seat. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's an ambitious project. I, I call it kind of audacious, thinking I'm going to pull this off. Uh, it's it's. Uh, and I'm using the, the Porsche 944 suspension. Um, that, that's going to be a pretty unique uh, way of going about it. And um, so, you know, it's in progress right now. Let's, let's go take a look at it. So here is the 67 Corvair Project Audacious. And uh, this episode is brought to you by jack stands. You know, can't do a whole lot of automotive work without jack stands. Certainly this project needed them. Got, got, got uh, the, the whole front of the car sitting up on the jack stands. And uh, as I mentioned in the intro, um, this car uh, is getting a Porsche 944 suspension. So right now I am working on the front suspension. This is the front suspension out of the 944. It's uh, all aluminum uh, cross member and, and control arms and uh, nice disc brakes. It's, uh, it's uh, got the sway bar. So to, to put this suspension in the car, what I did is I cut out the front shock towers out of a 944. And then I cut out, cleared all of the, out of, uh, all the metal out of the uh, front of the car here and trim back the existing frame rails so this would sit in there just right so it's all tacked in now I mean um, well first of all I put in these cross pieces so all of the existing uh, geometry would be kept intact so this thing wouldn't move at all so before I cut these pieces out of the 944 I welded uh, the cross member pieces in there or you know the support pieces so it hasn't uh, so it's all all geometry is correct and uh, just a matter of trimming it up to get it to fit in here just right and it turns out um, you know fits in there just well uh, really well um, you know with it with the uh, shock towers right at the as high as they go here it ends up lowering the car about four inches which is just where I want it so uh, 
So yeah, I have it uh, now. I, I finally got, got it all tacked in there. So uh, before I do a proper job of mounting all this in here, I'm gonna I gotta cut out the existing frame rails and go ahead and uh, bolt the the suspension in and make sure that it's that it's gonna work. <laughs> you know, I mean I've sort of measured everything and all that, and it should it should be. Should, should all work, but uh, you never know. And I, I could have it in there wrong, you never know. So so that's uh, that's where we're at on the suspension. Uh, maybe I'll cut, cut this stuff out today, although it's getting late, so I may not work on it anymore today. So here is the, the rear suspension out of the 944. It's also got aluminum arms, and uh, but I'll, I'll talk about that later. Not really. There is the engine, the Audi 4.2 engine, and you can see, you can, well, you can see the big mess I have is what you can see. But uh, this is this is the other 944 that I that I tore apart. It's still got all the rear is still uh, intact, so all the mounting points and everything. This is the older one, so it doesn't have aluminum arms you can see there's steel stamps welded steel so there's the transaxle and uh, so as you can see the the 944 has the in the engine is in the front of the car and then it's got a torque tube and then it's got the transaxle in the back so yeah it's kind of like the way the c5 corvette is done so this is the this is a, an 85 i think 944 and the parts I have are the second generation uh, 944, which has the aluminum arms and stuff. Um, so, so these are the transmissions that I got with the engine. That I think that's out of an Audi 80. It's an older, I think it's a V6 maybe, uh, transmission. It's a four-speed automatic. You can see how small that is. That's pretty darn small. It doesn't weigh nearly as much as this one. This is a, a ZF Getreg 5HP19 and uh, that uh, that's a very heavy transmission. So um, yeah I'm trying to decide what transmission to put in this car and and I can't uh, still quite haven't made up my mind on what I'm going to do. So I could put Originally, I wanted to put in the the 944S transmission, which is over here. Let me show you that. See, you can see there's the torque tube from the the 944S, and now there, yeah, here's the. Oh yeah. So here's the transmission of the 944S. So it, it's it, you know, externally it looks identical as as the one over there. But it's got a stronger first gear or a stronger ring gear, something like that. So it's it's highly desirable versus the uh, it's the same transmission as used in the 944 Turbo, but it doesn't have the limited slip. So so yeah, the inside of this thing is all gutted out. I like it. I said I sold the steering column and I kind of tore apart the dash. And uh, but it you know it's in pretty good shape really. Uh, you know, considering how old it's been, it's got this beautiful pan patina on it, and uh, that's another issue. Should I just leave the patina, or should I go ahead and paint it? I mean, it does need a little bit of body work. Um, I mean, look at the hood. It's uh, it's been sitting it's been sitting outside for many years. Um, oh yeah, so yeah, while I while I'm mentioning it. You know, I sort of tack these shock, shock towers to the fender, and you think, well, that's stupid. But um, the fenders on these cars are all integrated. They're all welded together. You cannot remove these fenders. On the front end and the fenders, it's all one piece. It's all welded together. So, um, yeah, that's unusual, you know. I think cars back in the day were, were not made like that. Although. Remember the, you know, if you know about the uh, Volkswagen uh, Carmen Ghia, it was it was done the same way. The the front end is all welded together, and uh, so maybe they were 
following on that principle. But yeah, so you can see, you can see uh, the fender is just part of the body. Uh, so yeah, so there we, there we go. I don't know what more I can say right now. I've got to uh, finish working on the front end and make sure it works and then put the wheels on it and drop it down off the jack stands and then I can focus on the rear suspension and got to you know cut all everything out and so so that's where we're at and uh, that's the introduction to project audacious still got a lot to do it's a big project but uh you know we're gonna we're gonna get it done right mm -hmm.